Hello friends, once again, uh, this is Paul from the Gloucester County Library, and welcome to another Game Jam time. I hope you've all been making some pretty cool games, or even just proof of concept games. I mean, one thing about being like a hobbyist kind of game designer is you don't have to make like full games, making a game idea, parts of games, something you can share, it doesn't have to be complete, is always fun to do. Um, today I'm going to show another uh, free game engine that you can use to make all sorts of interesting things. It's called Puzzle Script. And as the name kind of implies, it's really for making more puzzle oriented games. Uh, the kind of base game that it does is called Sokoban. You might not be familiar with it, uh, but it's been used in lots of different kind of uh, game concepts. I can think of a, I'm trying to think of it. It came out in Japan in the early nineties and came over here, I think originally as a game called Boxel where you're pushing crates into like holes. And they've got an example here. Let me show you. So you go to puzzlescript.net, you'll be met with this uh, screen here, which gives you a couple of, you can just jump in and make some of these or play some of these games that are down here. So if you click puzzles, if you click the gallery button down here and I'll open up a different tab, uh, you'll get an endless scrolling bunch of examples. You can click on these, you can play them, try them out. You can even open any puzzle script game you can open up and see how it's made, play around with it. Uh, they call it hacking. Uh, there'll be an option on the title screen to hack the game. But let's click out of there and go to make a game. And you'll see something like this. The editor's over here. Uh, the actual game window itself is over here. It says insert cartridge. If you go here and do the um, examples, the basic tutorial example, this is just a very simple Sokoban game. And if I click uh, click in here so I can use this one. X. So you can see here I am. And you can push these boxes around. And now I've caught there. I got all three in there. And that was the first level. And that might be the only level in this example. Oh, no, there's more. So you can see it just has a couple different levels. I think I just, yeah, now I just messed up. Um, but you can see if you hit Z, you can actually keep on rewinding yourself. If you press R, restarts the level. And if you look over here, this is everything the game has. So it has objects here, background, that's the grass. Uh, targets are the targets here. The walls, the player, you can see the player is there and the crates. Uh, and it might look a little weird to kind of parse what you're looking at, but everything over there is right here on a five by five grid. So you can have, um, I forget the maximum amount of colors you can have, but it's a lot. It's something like nine colors. Everything here looks like it has most of, you know, two to four colors. But you say the title of the object, colors you want, light green, green. And now light green, since it's the first color mentioned is zero. Green, since it's the second color, second color mentioned, is one. So you can see right there, all ones, then zero is a light green, and one's is dark green. And if you uh, look at the target here, if you have periods, that's a blank space. And then this only has one color, dark blue, so you can see the zeros draw the target there. There's your player, black, orange, white, blue. So there's his hair the skin, the shirt, the pants, the pants, and you can see that's just making that over there. So if I did yellow hair, you can see instantly the zeros turn to yellow. And if we rebuild this, click rebuild, now you can see his hair has turned blonde. Uh, if you wanted to make it stretch out a little longer, you can do change these periods to zeros. Click rebuild. And you can see now he has a really weird looking hair. Let's change that back. It looks strange. Uh, so that was period there, period there, rebuild our right, he looks back to his blonde looking section there. Uh, we go down legend, now this might not look like anything right now, period is background, asterisk or a uh, pound sign is wall, but if we look at the level, the level we're playing now is right here. You can see the pound sign is the wall. 
Now you don't have to actually draw the level like this. I'll show you in a sec how to actually make it. It's way easier. Um, but that's all the elements of the level right there. The player, the boxes, the target, the background. So if you go over here, click level editor, and now you can see you actually have all these options. Everything that is here and everything that's in the legend is right up here. So I can just make more wall, make more grass. Uh, if you go outside, you can see it turns into a little crosshair. So if we go outside, you can see it extends the level. And now we've got a bigger level. Oops. We'll put another box in, put another target in. And then we can uh, exit the level editor and so if I, if I clicked Rebuild and Run, it would actually go back to the way it was. What we want to do is Level Editor and click Save. You see down here it says Printing Level Contents, and there is our new level. So if we go Control-C, copy that. Control-V, there's our new level. Now if we Rebuild and Run, you can see there is our new level. And since I put a crate at the bottom, I can't actually get behind it and push it. So this level cannot be beaten. But <laughs> you can see that uh, it's really easy to just go in and using elements you make, um, make entirely new levels. Now that's only if you're doing box pushing. There's a lot of other things you can do with this. But um, Things like collision layers, sounds, I won't really get into. I will say if we go back to the puzzle script. How are you actually get it from here? Click Docs. Here's the documentation. It's very short, but it gives you a very good rundown of exactly what the levels are doing and how to, to, how to interact with them. If you look through the gallery, you can see that there's a lot more you can do than just pushing blocks into holes. Like that's just the most basic thing. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do with it, and it's all done through the script. Now you can see, just looking very quickly at the script here, if the player is moving in one direction towards a crate, then push the player, push the crate. That's all it needs to do to understand, you know, that you're pushing the crate as the player. Uh, then they change it really quickly, you just move the carrot that direction. Now you're, you're pulling the crate instead of pushing the crate. So you can do really interesting things with just a few different changes on here. Uh, and they get in here like this one showing you, okay, if there's an eyeball and it goes in line of sight of the player, now the eyeball is following the player. So you can do different things with it. Uh, there's a lot of interesting kind of documentation on, I think, rules kind of show you all the different kind of... These are a lot of the different things you can do with... Uh, the script to kind of change it to a totally different game, how to do win conditions, how to do different levels, all in here. Pretty simple stuff to get in and play around with, and like I said, you can go to any game and just look at it and start hacking it. Um, if we go back to the gallery, like if we look at this, so we can start to play it, or if you look down here, press hack. And then instantly you're looking at, here's everything that goes on in that example game that we were just looking at. A lot of rules in here. This is a much more complicated game, but you can see how all of it works right away. And when you're done a game, if you click, uh, you can always click save. That saves locally to the browser. You're playing, you're editing this game in the browser. It's played in the browser, so it will save to the browser. But if you want to make sure to have a hard copy, uh, click export and it exports it as an HTML file. Uh, that way you can save it on your hard drive. Uh, you can always uh, load it back up if you want to load up a version that might have gotten lost. Um, or if you wanted to uh, save it to an external, like I will show you a game I made that I downloaded the HTML file and then uploaded it to a different site so that everyone can play it on this one area. 
Now I'll show you one example that I made real quick. Um, I let's see if I can actually get my one loaded up here that I have. Okay, I got a lot of the Wizard's Tower, so load up Wizard's Tower. Uh, now you can see I kind of redrew everything. Let's actually start the game here so you can see it. I have a little wizard in this little tower. These traps here, if you get into the line of sight of them, will kill you instantly. Dead. Uh, so let's restart the level. And what you're trying to do is you can press X when you're in line with these targets, these little tuning fork targets, and it will destroy them. So if you go over here, click X kills it. Uh, so you got to go over to the other one here. And that's just the first level. It didn't actually, it should go to the, the next level, but I think because we're not actually, we're in the level editor mode, so it doesn't. Let's try running that again. And then it goes to the next level. And I tried to make more complicated layouts. Um, originally, I had another option where you had the crates from the original example game, and I wanted to be able to push the crates into the way, into the line of sight of these traps, so that way you can get behind them. Uh, I haven't figured out how to do that with the script language yet, but I'm still working on it. So I have three levels right now that you can just, uh, you have to avoid the traps and take out all the tuning fork targets. And if you look over here, you can see here's all the, the backgrounds, the floor, the target, the wall, my player, the wizard, the traps, is uh, the wizard when he's dead, and the crates, which you don't use because I couldn't figure out how to use them. And you can see there are three different levels here. Uh, the, the rules here are really simple because uh, you're pretty much just trying to destroy the targets and not get killed by the, the uh, traps. That's all there is to it. And if you want to play it yourself, I actually uploaded it to uh, itch.io. So you can see if you go to this website here, uh, it'll let you play the game yourself. You can run it right in the browser. And... Well, there, I just killed myself instantly. <laughs> so if you want to play this for yourself, I will put a link in the description or in the video right here. Um, that's the website right there to go to. And it'll just let you play through. It's only three levels. It's more of a proof of concept thing. But you can go ahead and give it a try. Um, so that's Puzzle Script in a nutshell. Like I said, uh, let's go back to the main part here. So that's the website there. I'll put the video right here, but it's puzzlescript.net. I'll put that link in there. Um, I played I played a couple of games to try and get the idea of how to uh, use the, the, the scripting language. I really like this snake where, one where you eat zombies, but it's really tough. A couple levels in, it gets very difficult. Um, if you click gallery, you can try a whole bunch of different games. Like I said, go in. And if you go to make a game, read the docs here. Really uh, fast, very succinct uh, uh, scripting language. It'll tell you like all you need to know very early on. And before I forget, one thing that's really fun, in addition to the level editor and making different things, these things down here make random sounds like so collect item sound. I don't know if you can hear that, but if you press it again, it gives you different ones, and you can choose which sounds you want and put them in here. So you can see under sounds, crate, move, and that sound there. So if you say crate, move, and this sound, if you just copy that number and put it over there, then when the crate moves, it makes that sound. Uh, my Wizard's Tower game has a couple different sounds for destroying the uh, targets, for winning the level, and for getting yourself killed. They all have different sounds, and they're all from just trying different things here. You can hold, make a whole bunch of different sounds randomly right there that are really easy to do. Um, so that's Puzzle Script in a nutshell. Give it a try. It's really fun. The games you can find, uh, the example games are really fun. Um, and I'd be really interested in seeing what you have made as well. So jump into Puzzle Script and make your next great game. And if you've, if you've made any games previously from the other game jams or from this one, I'd love to see them. Um, so you can tag the library or you can email me directly, uh, ppalmer at gcls.org. I'd love to see what you made. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.